start the session or make a quick housekeeping request. Uh, first, I see there's a lot of Shazaslam joined in. And so apologies, I mistakenly have shared my own uh, uh, link to join in. So if you all could kindly uh, rename yourself, you would see three dots. Uh, if you uh, put the cursor on your name, you would see three dots. And if you click rename, you can rename yourself. So I would kindly request if everybody can rename themselves. Um, and other than speakers, uh, would kindly request, please uh, keep yourself uh, on mute. Uh, we would have a QA session in the end. And so we would um, follow up on that. As for the brief agenda, we will have uh, a quick welcome note from myself and then a theme setting from Ali Sayed, uh, followed by some feedback and keynote sessions from Dr. Zegam from Ministry of Climate Change, uh, Dr. Safdar um, Ali Sohail from uh, SPRC, which is a Social Protection Resource Center, uh, then Asma Gul from Akhtar Hamid the Khan Memorial Trust, which is a NGO, but also a niche uh, on, uh, enterprise which is working with waste pickers and waste management sector, and then some advisory or commentary remarks from Dr. Mansoor Ali, who is a lead advisory at Royal Academy. Uh, we also have some participants and colleagues from Vigo joined in. Um, so we would also have some remarks or perhaps some comments in a QA session or in the end. Uh, with that, I think I can go ahead with uh, briefing the, the agenda, perhaps more about the uh, context of this event. Um, so this is more of a pioneering or very comprehensive report uh, in the sector of uh, informal sector, specifically waste pickers uh, in, in Pakistan. Um, as you might be aware, some of you, that uh, the informal sector plays a pivotal role in fostering climate change, uh, but also the circular economy, particularly in low-income, uh, middle-income countries, where waste pickers play a crucial role in collecting, diverting waste from recycling materials, markets, from landfills, and other uh, communities and neighborhoods. And not only they reduce life cycle uh, utilities, but also reducing life cycle and landfill usage, uh, applying to supply secondary materials, despite significant challenges uh, and lack of, let's say, initiatives at particular levels. And this particular research is commissioned by International Alliance for Waste Pickers and Women in Informal Employment and Globalization and Organization, short for VIGO, uh, and for um, Alliance for Waste Pickers. This project was undertaken by Robust Waste Management and Circular Economy uh, Initiative led at uh, Karachi School of Business and Leadership, uh, known as Circular Plastic Institute. Uh, with this, I'll hand over to my colleague Ali um, for setting a brief about uh, the context of this report, let's say. Uh, Ali Sayed is a Circular Economy and Waste Management professional with uh, over the experience of 10 years within Southeast Asia, um, South Asia, Australia, and Europe. Uh, he has a range of contribution to international and uh, national organizations like IFC, World Bank, and others. Um, and Ali, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shiza. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, really, really happy uh, to be hosting this and sharing um, our findings and study with you. Just quickly, going to keep it brief because um, I can talk about this all day. Um, just a bit about the project. Uh, it's been 10 years in the making, um, starting from ground level. Uh, we've been trying to, as a firm and with our partners uh, like CPI, um, KSBL and others, been trying to look at how we can reverse brain drain, uh, bring international learnings in, and also spring up localized indigenous learnings and unearth um, our sector. In terms of what the mix is within project partners, for international organizations, um, you've got KSBL, you've got technical academia background and expertise, ourselves, just going to quickly snapshot, we've tried to, within our firm and with our partners, try to merge the value chain actors, the supply chain and learning so we can get a full spectrum pocket and not keep working in silos. Um, through that, we've driven local knowledge, we've driven international knowledge, and we've driven, um, you know, more current um, context of global conversation and try to see how we can reset the tone for the landscape of waste pickers, uh, not just coupled as the informal sector, not just coupled as Kabaria, but at base level humans that are interacting within the value chain, like everybody here today, um, whether the private sector, NGOs, academia, consultants, experts, waste collectors, on how we're all contributing to the sector from 
the collection side, generation side, all the way up, and how we can set and reset the tone for Pakistan to propel policy initiatives, projects, and work a bit better together, uh, understanding everybody's role. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, Ali. Um, this is more to set the context of uh, why waste picker or the supply chain involvement has been so important uh, in Pakistan. I'll now sh uh, share my screen just to brief uh, about the key highlights or the key findings. Um, so bear with me for a while. Meanwhile, yeah. okay, great. Um, I hope it is it, visible. To all, Ali, if you can confirm, please. Yep, it's visible. Okay, Should be good. great. Mm -hmm. um, so good this luck. is to to brief about the key uh, findings for our report and the study that we conducted over the span of eight months. Um, the title, which we thoroughly concluded as mapping the landscape of waste pickers in Pakistan, um, challenges, opportunities, and organizational strategies therein. Um, for this study, uh, we conducted a stratified sampling at three uh, cities of Pakistan, namely Karachi, Lahore, and Moritki. Karachi and Lahore being the mega cities, uh, Karachi has a population of more than 20 million, with Lahore more than population of 12 million, and then Moritki, one second city, just to kind of have a comparison between mega cities and the uh, secondary cities supply chains, but also the context within which waste pickers also uh, interplay and then also live together. Um, at, in each city, we conducted 40 interviews, um, again being stratified in a way that it was concluded that we are to capture all waste groups that I will briefly touch upon. Uh, in addition, we conducted uh, 20 surveys as well. Um, the purpose of conducting interviews was to understand more about their organizational strategies and how as an entrepreneur see themselves. Uh, with interviews or with surveys, we specifically looked into what sort of challenges they have and what areas of social protection that they have been expanding or exposing into. Um, when I say we did a stratified sampling, we meant, I mean that we kind of covered a very broad spectrum of waste pickers. When we call waste pickers, uh, those who are not aware, they might assume that it's a very generalized group and uh, that it just has a one niche. But once we delve into, we understand, okay, waste pickers have various subgroups and various sub niches and uh, individual identities within. In this is the scope of this studies, we kind of categorize into four broader themes or four broader groups, if you may call it. Uh, one uh, is segregated waste stream, uh, wa uh, stream waste pickers, which would include entrant buyers, sorters, partners, uh, those who exchange waste components for good or in exchange of, let's say, material or money. And then we have make a mixed stream waste pickers. Uh, who are commonly referred as uh, street waste pickers, transfer station um, waste pickers, uh, dump sites uh, waste pickers, or in, in Pakistani context, this would be as Kachrakundi waste pickers. Then we have uh, employed waste pickers. Uh, in this kind of group, we uh, compounded sweepers, uh, sanitary workers, waste collectors, municipal workers, self-employed, who could be a small scale service providers, um, in different contexts and then contracted sweepers as third empl party employed or wagers. Um, Self-organized waste pickers, it's mostly door to uh, doorstep waste pickers, uh, often seen as a small scale service provider or micro entrepreneurs who are in informal setting are providing waste collection services and then daily wagers who are not necessarily uh, affiliated with an uh, external party or third party to uh, kind of have a mutual say in or buy in as a middleman. So who are the waste pickers in, in Pakistan? This context might vary in different con uh, uh, neighborhoods or communities or even in the regions that they are in. Um, but once we deep dive into the value chain of the waste, we see that at the point of, uh, at the very near, near the source or where the waste is being produced, uh, we see three major groups of waste pickers. One is iterant buyers who would come as maybe uh, get your waste in exchange of money. We also see employed waste pickers who could be seen as, again, as informal service providers. Uh, and then have we have self-organized waste pickers uh, who could be as a micro entrepreneurs in themselves. Then we have communal bins and um, uh, marketplaces or let's say parks in our neighborhoods that are somewhat uh, in, in adjacent to the source of uh, generation. 
but then again could be bifurcated bit further. Here we see sanitary workers at, at uh, their employment, um, but also as in street waste pickers as more exposed or more adjacent or near to the source. Um, at the third point, we have collection systems. Um, for instance, we have transfer station in some um, localities in case of uh, Karachi and Lahore in particular. In case of Moritke, we did not have uh, a transfer station, but landfill side directly. So uh, one could understand in terms of the context, one of these instances could be skipped, but where the context allows, one additional group could be added. So in case of Lahore and Karachi, we saw we also have GTS or Kachra Kundi waste pickers. And then we have the landfill or dump side or disposal side uh, waste pickers commonly referred as landfill waste pickers. Um, in case of Pakistan, what we noticed that it is a male dominated area, mainly um, Pashto speaking or Muslim community was uh, dominated across all three countries, but that could be generalized in, in, in case of Pakistan as well. Uh, we also have some of the uh, non-Muslim community representative as well, but that was more seen in the Sin state province that is in, in, in Karachi state, but that's also due to the how social setting has been in, in Pakistan. Um, in terms of gender bifurcation, we saw that women have been involved, uh, but in certain instances, in certain groups, they are more dominant. Uh, and in certain uh, groups, they have very uh, few uh, presence. Uh, we will be speaking more about the gender dimension in my later uh, presentation. But nonetheless, we do see that women as a permanent contractor or as a sanitary worker has been more dominant within the value chain or the streamline of waste picking in Pakistan. While we were conducting or grouping this waste pickers, we had an extensive debate about how we want to define waste pickers. Um, so that has been an interesting uh, debate, but I think that is still remained an unfinished discussion and would like to hear more comments during our QA session. Um, so the debate revolved around whether we want to assume that those who associate their livelihood primarily and solely with waste material recovery, should we call them as waste pickers or those who have also secondary means? primary or secondary, and then also do waste picking as a means to their additional livelihood, should they also be conceived as uh, waste pickers. For the sake of this project, we assume either they are primary or secondary resource of income, whether if they are involved in waste picking, they will be listed as waste pickers. For instance, in case of uh, informal sector, uh, they are the one who are, let's say, more lenient or more prominent uh, waste picker in terms of finances, more stable ones. Nonetheless, much of their reliance was on waste picking that they would collect, sort, and then recycle. They do not necessarily provide um, case collection services in slum areas or low middle income areas, primarily because the waste value. Have there been such that the waste collection door-to-door -door services or fee from household is not enough for them to have this business sense or business visibility for them to allow waste picking or allow them the services in their respective area. Um, so with, with this understanding, we assumed and then we concluded for this particular project and in our future references, perhaps we tend to include waste pickers, those uh, who have um, any regard for their livelihood with waste picking associated whether primary or secondary. Uh, one thing that interestingly came out during our study was interaction among waste uh, picking groups. Um, initially, we assumed or the hypothesis was developed that there would be a uh, peer to peer learning. For instance, street waste pickers would be leveraging on transfer stage waste pickers or maybe informal um, service providers or let's say landfill um, transfer stations or landfill waste pickers. But to our surprise, uh, we saw that the waste picking is a very territorial. Um, uh, exercise and, and also in uh, business uh, to them. Uh, with waste uh, street waste pickers, they face uh, access restrictions due to the other waste service provider, particularly those who are informal uh, small scale service providers. So they wouldn't necessarily allow them to even um, pick their waste from the streets uh, in their neighborhood. Although informal small scale service provider, most of them do not uh, tend to get involved into the sanitary services, for instance, cleaning the streets and others. But nonetheless, these restrictions remains in the neighborhood where they provide those services. Uh, in terms of waste management companies, a lot of time they criticize waste pickers for reducing collected waste um, and causing scattered scattered waste around the bins. This is also to do with the KPIs and how the contractual setting has been developed or the TORs are being developed for the waste management service provider on which they are being paid. 
Uh, then in, at the point of transfer stations, uh, we, we observe that waste picker closely work with a few peers or interact with kabari walas, but again, within their own specific point uh, or within the same group um, of the transfer station of waste pickers. Offer learning shared experiences through conflicts and fights among common uh, uh, collectors are common. So we did see some peer-to-peer -peer learning, but that was specific to within the group, but not across the groups. Uh, waste pickers with designated collection houses, or if we may call them as a service provider, um, may uh, and have been facing conflicts or altercation if there have been other individual or with similar uh, appetite for waste collection service provide provision in their locality. So they wouldn't necessarily allow another entrepreneur or another informal service provider within their neighborhood, uh, primarily because of this business or economic sense of fear. Uh, salaried waste pickers, whether they are sanitary workers or employed as th third party wagers, uh, mostly work in team, um, build a strong relationship uh, and share information and assist each other when necessary. Um, in terms of social background, which has been very interesting because this is how they have been relying on the social assets that they have developed for so forth over the time. Uh, what we observed that the waste picking industry in Pakistan mostly relies or expands upon as a micro enterprises or as a family uh, business, primarily or mostly in informal service provider cases or in case of transfer station um, uh, sort of waste pickers. Uh, when it comes to waste, waste uh, pickers at the street level, there we saw more individual or unassociated individual coming into the waste picking activity. Uh, waste picking in Pakistan primarily is preferred by marginalized groups, uh, individual with limited education or livelihood uh, expenses and, and accounts, and the minorities. Um, the waste pickers as service provider uh, in, in Pakistan are primarily Pashtun speaking community. Uh, who have been serving as self-employed service provider primarily among all the groups. Um, additionally, we saw in the year of uh, 2022 to 2023, uh, due to economic downturn and some uh, financial constraint, uh, we saw many other individuals who were not necessarily associated with waste picking priority uh, came into waste picking. And their primary uh, entry point was to enter as street waste pickers rather than any other group. So the transfer station uh, waste picking did not welcome them. The landfill waste pickers did not welcome them. And the entry point for such individual who did not have any prior experience or any prior network or their family wasn't involved was primarily waste uh, and get into waste picking through street waste pickers. Individuals who become waste pickers are often street waste pickers again, um, because there are less sense of territorial or seniority system in place for them. Um, the transfer station waste pickers, we observe that they are mostly associated as a business uh, with, within families. So they are working in those territories from generations to generations, or their cousin would be coming in and they have strong uh, family and kinship uh, assessments. Uh, Self-employed waste pickers, um, they see them more as a business people and more as an entrepreneurs and have a sense of uh, this micro entrepreneurial in, in them. So once we talk to them, they would more talk about money, more talk about revenues, more talk about um, the business case. Uh, so they have a like, strong sense of um, accounting, a so strong sense of business case, but also have good sense of family business, how to expand and outsource if they need me. Uh, we saw conflicting and, and concerning uh, working conditions for waste pickers. Um, a, uh, given the, the scenario and the climatic condition of Pakistan, the high temperature was one that was uh, kind of like uh, mentioned or pronounced uh, as, a, as a critical con condition or concern for all groups of waste pickers, uh, especially during summers, uh, where they see because of the high temperature, they have to tend to work on a reduced hours. Uh, hence, they are more vulnerable in those points because then they are tend to get uh, less value or less income in those particular uh, times. Uh, lack of access to shelter and drinking water was another point uh, point that was mentioned. Again, more pungent in, in high temperature or the summer uh, restrictions areas. Uh, I have also listed some quotes uh, quotes from them. Uh, feel free to uh, get to know them. Um, we also saw in terms of uh, self-employed waste pickers, uh, the collection services uh, they provide face challenges primarily among the flooding season because then they have 
limited access to household, limited access to streets, limited access to certain neighborhoods who might be flooded or might be drenched. Um, and hence they reduce the have substantial redu reduction in their income and more vulnerable to the poverty shocks. Uh, waste pickers who are contracted or daily wages in private or public companies were seen to have more high working loads. So they were their KPIs were set way beyond what uh, additional or what standard human right um, associations would recommend. Um, a lot of time without any break, a uh, straight for working from seven to eight hours and insufficient staff uh, with no paid time off during vacations and other necessary events. Additionally, they also had several issues with equipment. Um, their wheels were, let's say, from the bins were broken or they were not a, a significant additional resources to manage the waste within their capacities. Um, on the right side, you would see a graph that would kind of uh, explain how the waste is being handled and on an average on a daily basis, how many or what groups would they uh, can kind of expose to hazardous elements or even medical necessary, not necessarily. Um, in case of mixed, uh, mixed uh, stream waste pickers, and they have the more exposure to most hazardous and they're more exposed to these extreme conditions, let's say whether they be blood, uh, sharp metals, broken glasses, feces, or ne needles. Um, segregated stream, they were more protected from them because they, they are getting more cleaner, let's say, relatively sorted waste in, in per se, and then contracted did not necessarily have this exposure again uh, per se. Um, to continue with the working condition challenges, they face chronic challenges of harassment and security issues that was prevalent among all working uh, all groups of waste pickers and across the three regions that we covered, both mega cities and secondary state cities. Um, most of them mentioned that uh, waste pickers from Pashto speaking community in particularly seem to have a bitter relationship with uh, police in particular and have faced several harassment and security issues open face social stigmatization and negative stereotypes. They have been perceived as drug addicts, as thieves, uh, as individual in, involved in illegal activities. So there, there are certain biases that has been associated with waste pickers uh, in, in Pakistani community. Um, this result in further marginalization, discrimination, and limited uh, livelihood opportunities. Again, to the, the group that has that, that is already min in minority is already marginalized. Uh, waste pickers, especially those are contracted in daily wages, again, face heavy workloads, staff shortages, and lack of paid leave. Um, uh, interestingly, when we see that uh, we have a cross whole value chain and the movement of waste is from one point to the other, but also among various stakeholders and st various uh, stages, uh, we also then have an understanding how do waste pickers op uh, operate among those waste stages. So street waste pickers choose areas based on their form, uh, familiarity, uh, about their connection or just knowing the neighborhood and the local connection. In these areas, lacking waste collection, they expand their services as entrepreneurs. As we saw, a certain informal service provider, they were initially as uh, street waste pickers, but once they had this understanding of their neighborhood and the economics of the business, they then get into the service provision activity uh, through the support of certain capital and certain social assets. Transfer station waste pickers sell waste uh, daily due to the space uh, constraint. And that's allow them to more vulnerable to again to the um, to the poverty because they have lack of negotiation power because of lack of space constraints. They are also more involved in family and business selling uh, options. Landfill waste pickers familiar are more familiar with the area. Most of them have been living there for generations to generations from maybe 20 to 30 years um, and mostly sell the waste collected within those uh, neighborhood and mostly Kabariwala or the junk dealer would come to them rather they would go, go to the city or the urban centers because of the uh, convenience and also the rates they would prefer or the economics uh, of it, let's say. Uh, waste pickers, uh, those uh, who operate within this dynamics are very competitive, um, providing collection services to private housing and other residences, uh, and they would normally charge certain uh, uh, payment uh, to that. We also observed that they have also been um, onboarded by some unions, but through informal uh, contracts and informal governments or in invisible governance mechanisms. Um, and those recruitments are never formally acknowledged or recognized, but they are working behind the scenes or without any um, provisions. Segregated waste pickers negotiate prices usually provided by the list 
uh, accommodated by the junk dealer to them. So they have this kind of negotiation power, but sort of facilitated by the middleman. Uh, salaried waste pickers sell recycled waste as mixed waste, uh, earning through fixed prices. So we also see there's a notion of fixed prices versus variable prices and how that leads to different uh, protection in terms of their livelihood and means. Housing was also one of the key area that was brought up and they was very concerning about it, um, primarily during the climatic condition when there is flood, when there is um, drought, um, but more so let's say about, about the flood areas because then they would have to migrate from one place to the other, although they are living in substantial slum areas to begin with. So they often resort to setting up informal settlements around, let's say a landfill dumping site or transfer stations. So they have to commune, commune with less and they are readily accessible to the waste they are provided. Um, they are often at risk of eviction by the authorities. Uh, we see that uh, more so in the case of Karachi as compared to Lahore, uh, which can lead to the displacement and loss of livelihood for the waste pickers. Uh, we saw that lack of business, uh, basic infrastructure such as gas and electricity have been there, uh, even among the waste pickers who have been living in more relatively safe communities, let's say low income areas compared to the slum uh, areas. Lack of access and to basic amenities such as clean water, proper sanitation uh, was pronounced. One interesting fact I think that our report or our study has brought in is the involvement of Kabariwalas. We see that a lot of uh, empirical studies show uh, kind of restraints or some caution about the role of Kabariwalas. But in case of Pakistan, uh, we interestingly saw a positive side of that as well, that or, uh, a lot of the waste pickers were more or so organized around the Kabariwalas, the max uh, distance we catered was 11 to 15 kilometer. Most of the uh, waste picker wicking groups, they would prefer to settle within the neighborhood or the vicinity of two to five kilometers of um, distance. Uh, they around they organized uh, around Kabariwalas for various reasons, uh, for social protection net, for providing them with loans, uh, for assistance, uh, for uh, facilitation, and then negotiation at different uh, interests. With Kabariwala, um, the, the assessments that had been listed in the literature and by various peers uh, were also seen, but that is still to debate whether they're seen as a positive remark or a negative remark that the self-organization and non-written uh, agreement has been there. And there is a grouping and access in ethnicity-based territorial um, associations. Waste speakers have developed their own system of negotiation and operating within the communities without the need for formal contracts or written agreements. That's also to expedite the uh, process, but at the same time, it makes them more vulnerable to certain um, challenges that otherwise be protected through legal means. Waste pickers designate their own areas or territories for waste collection based on first come and first serve. And that has been across the groups, whether they are street waste pickers, transfer station waste pickers or others. Clean waste pickers are observed to have some bargaining and negotiation power, but that's also because they sometimes have other experiences of livelihood. They might be selling fruits or other um, means. So they have more exposure to dealing with different sort of materials, but also different sort of businesses as well. The loan agreement between junk dealer or kabadi wallet, you may call it, and waste pickers are often verbal and not documented. And sometimes even preferred, that's why they sometimes not prefer to go to banks and otherwise, but also because it's more convenient and expedited and accelerated um, process, leading some of the waste pickers to feel vulnerable uh, at the same time in their relationship with Kabariwala that they have to uh, like negotiation power because they are relying way too much on the middlemen. Uh, Kabariwala again play an important role for clean waste stream uh, waste pickers by providing equipment and also Mori, which is advanced payment, so they can buy waste material in exchange of money from the residents and other clients. Social protection net was most pronounced uh, aspect in our study. Um, that also allowed them uh, to uh, us to understand how they organize themselves, why the role of Kabariwala or the middleman is important, but also in the future intervention, what should be done. Um, so we saw that there's lack of access to the formal social protection mechanism, including uh, health insurance. Waste pickers in Pakistan depend upon uh, Kabariwala primarily for their loans and financial aids. Uh, covering essential expenses like health, education, social events such as weddings or funerals. Uh, waste pickers often receive undocumented loans from Kabariwalas who deduct a portion of their earnings until the repayment is done. 
and this also allows them to receive financial aid from friends and family in addition. Um, then we also observe that waste pickers generally are noticed not to be familiar with formal government schemes, let's say that was provided during the COVID or in locally we have um, healthcare or certain provisions or BNC income support or that many were not even in aware that such mechanism or such schemes exist to begin with for them to allow uh, to benefit from them. So there is lack of coverage or lack, a lack of access to certain information, especially in certain groups which are already uh, low in terms of education and, and certain network. In some cases, um, they were able to get certain let's say loans or other financial means from company they work with, but that was restricted to certain groups only. Um, again, we also have certain dimension uh, of gender display within the waste picking community. It remains a male dominated com uh, area for all the working groups, um, but let's say for the Pashto community or Muslim community, women uh, were um, being engaged at the sorting point, but not necessarily at the waste picking point. Um, we we saw that the poly community, non-Muslim community were more active with the, the, the gender, let's say, uh, interplay where women were actively involved in waste picking, but that was more restricted to landfill areas where they have been living for 20 to 30 years and have more understanding of each other in the neighborhood and the community. So they feel more comfortable or secure in a sense that they can go out and then pick the waste. Um, Women participation in self-employed waste picking as collection service provider is very limited. Um, so we did not necessarily encounter any business uh, waste picking a woman in, in the sphere. Uh, if a waste picker is sick, they may take young girls from their family to collect waste picking from household. Um, so that has been quite common across all the working group, uh, waste picking groups. In contrast, women are more likely to work as permanent contracted waste uh, pickers that we also may known as sanitary waste pickers. Um, in case of trade unions and officially accepted organizations, there are very few, uh, unfortunately, and the union that have been in, in play in Pakistan, that their role has been diminishing over the uh, eight years uh, due to various reasons, but nonetheless, let's highlight the, um, their importance and certain support. Um, one thing that we wanted to also mention in the pinpoint was existing laws hinder formal integration or cooperation with waste pickers. So we do not have any uh, example or any demonstrative example where could we see there is a synergy or interaction that has been played between the formal and informal actors. Or um, if there is an informal service provider, the municipality built upon their existing network or their is existing businesses and then leverage as an example. So we do not existingly have such uh, formal informal interplay at all in Pakistan and there is country uh, currently no framework guiding municipalities incorporating uh, municipal waste management services uh, with waste pickers but this also corresponds to multinational companies and others who want to expand the social sustainability of their life cycle of uh, supply chains and then include waste pickers or the informal actors within their supply chains. Uh, we also observe power dynamics, relationship with authorities, and contractual nature, which influence waste management contracts, uh, requiring negotiation for waste picker service provisions, together with informal or invisible governments. Um, again, the role of union, trade, or labor has been very limited and, in fact, been sidelined uh, for several years. Uh, on top of that, we also saw some changes in the waste system. So there have been some changes within the climate with because of certain working conditions, but also how the waste management system or behavior and consumption styles uh, or modernization of waste is happening. So that has also been influenced and affecting waste pickers in general. Uh, we saw the urbanization and population growth is affecting. It creates certain opportunities for certain groups of waste pickers who can set up to provide waste management services in undeserved areas, particularly low middle income areas, um, because the municipality on their radar prefer uh, service, uh, providing services to high income areas as their program priority. Uh, urban commercialization impact on waste pickers. We saw that the inner city development and commercialization has led to more regulated waste management limiting the opportunities for waste pickers. Security guards often seen as that in the commercial areas, they would restrict um, the access or would just, just to create the uh, customer-friendly uh, ambience, they wouldn't allow waste pickers to 
have the access to waste or even within the, that particular neighborhood or the vicinity. Seasonality, as mentioned, has been a one that was highlighted, but on a positive side, they mentioned that during the summer, they get to have more waste to pick and sort because people consume more, let's say, in terms of pet bottles and others, so they get uh, relatively more um, finances. Um, contractual and outsourcing that remains a problem um, because of the current uh, notion of Pakistan changes in power and political parties directly influence uh, and this is a major concern that needs to be uh, underscored um, and again changing practices within the management privatization a restriction to burning another has also been seen to influence waste pickers in various capacities um, with that I'll conclude and happy to receive any question during the QA session.